think, you know, like it, I think it started really as just like wanting to start to feel a kind of a deep sense of a connection to place, you know, and I think as an access to kind of really starting to care for the environment, care for the planet. Um, and really sort of, yeah, exploring what it means to have roots and to have personal connection to a piece of land, a deep sense of kinship, a sense of our, like, our place in the world, a sense of like our part in, in the whole kind of mess of things, you know, the whole intricate web of life. And three times a day, you know, we, have, we eat food and, and the nature of that experience is really up to us. And it's an opportunity really three times a day to commune with our local environment. And I came across this um, community supported agriculture model, um, which is sort of where, where the community really invests in the project and pledges their support through the season and sort of, and sort of surrenders themselves too to the seasonal nature of food growing and, and you know, the challenges and rewards of farming and, and comes along with you really. And I think, I sort of saw in that all the ethics of permaculture encapsulated in a, in a model. So the word permaculture, for me, it's, um, it's, it has so many different meanings to different people, but for me at Glassbren, it's much more like how humans are not just working with nature, but really like getting a relationship with nature and realizing that there is living things all around us and we are just one of those living things. To regenerate means to, to breathe new life into, is to, to do something that supports life. Um, and so, yeah, looking to kind of the way natural ecosystems, the way the forest supports life, um, through networks, through connections, through working within its limits. In comparison to our sort of industrialized capitalist system, which feels quite anti-life and anti-health, um, it's about looking at ways we can mimic natural ecosystems to support human life. Having more of a uh, connection with the soil health here is similar to that of the gut health. So if we encourage the good bacteria to be growing, so we might harvest the bacteria from the, from the forest and then bring it into the land. So this kale here on the, on the ground beneath it has got all the good bacteria and microbiomes that we've inoculated the soil with and it's going to break down all of the elements in the soil so the roots can take it up so much more easier. And like this kale here, it's got such a nice sheen to it that we know that the cabbage white can't penetrate the sheen because it's, um, it's so healthy. So we don't have to do, use any pesticides because we've given it the right start in life. They're happy little plants here at Glassbrenn. If you look at nature, if you look at the natural world, nothing exists in isolation, nothing functions in isolation, everything exists in relationship to everything else, you know, in different ways. And, and I think that, yeah, taking that kind of whole picture approach to the way we grow food practically, you know, and then, and then the way we've organized this project, um, yeah, it's very much about that, you know, it's about it's about exploring health and what is a, what is a whole system approach to health, you know, and, and literally if we, did not, if we don't have healthy soils, we cannot have healthy humans. And if we do not have healthy humans, we cannot have healthy communities, healthy families. And so, yeah, it's trying to treat everything as a, as a, as a whole. But there is a certain level you have to give away control. You have to surrender, you have to have faith that whatever you're doing works. Mostly when you want to work with nature, not against it. You want to be in it and you also want to feel like you're really a part of it. 
to have the feeling that you are actually not necessarily helping nature thrive because I think nature knows very well what to do for herself but to just really be part of it as much as we can and I think that is in the garden represented so well it's all just flows in each other and it does give a lot of space for things to happen as well pests or mice to come and eat the seeds and weeds to take over sometimes but I do love that whole model in itself because it means that the guys they have support really like kind of again to a place where people give away control the customers even they can't choose what they get they are okay to support them throughout the year through any kind of thing that might happen so they give away control here and I feel that giving away of control is something so good for us as humans to happen, for us to, as for each other to actually like come closer together and to have a felt relationship again rather than just like a kind of I pay for this, you give me that, which is quite detached as well from what it really is. And that is that certain degree of surrender that really makes this place so beautiful and and somehow meditative to me, like to be able to just sit here and not feel like people are running around me under duress all the time and like, you know, you really see their slow pacedness and there's is really like happiness in what is done here and that's just felt everywhere. Like meditation is one of those words that it's kind of uh, people get a bit scared of because it's difficult to do sometimes or a bit scary to go too deep, but meditation could be anything really, like taking a few breaths while picking some veg or connecting with the soil when your hands are deep in the soil that's a form of meditation itself and by doing that people's mental health can just dramatically increase. The garden has really really improved my mental health and working with other people um, yeah. and I just love it. When we moved here when I was 10 um, we didn't really, we didn't have much of the land really, and it was wasn't great, great land. Um, Mum and Dad worked really hard um, to get it the way it is today. Um, when I was younger, we had a few animals, helped with the animals. We had a small vegetable patch garden. Um, but when I was 21, I moved to Northern Ireland. Um, I was there for eight years, um, just. My life at the time took me to Northern Ireland um, and then about five years ago I moved back um, and actually Abel moved back around the same time because he was he was living in Spain um, and he came up with a vision of wanting to do a vegetable garden and veg boxes and the scheme um, and asked if I could help and I agreed because I really wanted to help and get into the gardening and it's helped me dramatically like um, within my life like I wasn't in a great way when I came back from Northern Ireland and uh, Abel helped me a lot with sort of getting better you definitely need to either work outside or work on the land or grow things to like connect with anything in your life really it's not just being able to grow food it's you know, the lifestyle and how you realise what's important in your life. Um, yeah, so other people would really benefit because um, it just like changes your whole mindset and your well-being is, is improved massively. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's changed my life dramatically. So, and you just feel, I always feel happier being outside and sort of doing outdoor work and, and working with Abel and Steph and just being able to chat to people, you know, as long as you can have people encouraging you and you can do anything really. I can personally only say every heartbreak has made me grow and has shown something beautiful, new thing, but when you're in it, you're kind of, oh my God, like, what is this? Like, like, you're just in pain, you're suffering. But it shows that phenomenon that we carry inside ourselves, that potential of everything that happens to be something bigger. And I find that really beautiful when you plant a seed that's tiny and you would think there is no life in it anymore, but then you just plant it 
and you give it a little, little food, a little food for thought, a little nutrition, a little love or whatever you want to call it, and it grows. But it grows also not with us knowing, it's hidden. It's in the soil and it slowly, slowly grows and also only grows again because we gave away like control, a little surrender to the nature, to all these things working for themselves. And I feel that's the same with everything that happens in life, with everything that comes, it holds potential for something much deeper and growth for ourselves and that's where meditation tries to go to. What are we really? What is hidden behind all of this? What would happen if I would just not think for once? We've really tried to encourage a culture of no duress here. So for the volunteers and for ourselves to try not to fall into that you know, productivity mindset where we're just trying to produce, produce, produce and make, make the most of every single hour because I think something's really lost in that. Like over the time that I've been here, you know, we've had numerous volunteers, uh, numerous people from all over the world really. There's so many people that have come away from here that have sort of wanted to either, you know, actually realise a lot of people come here not realising they needed the time and the, I guess, the therapy for outside, but they go away then with, you know, as much as they need, if not more. So it's easy to portray um, this beautiful farming life and it being all relaxed and lovely in the sunshine picking these green vegetables, but um, like any aspect of life, there comes its struggles and challenges. Um, mostly when it's winter and it's cold. I suppose that's where working as a team at Glassburn is fantastic because we can motivate each other. It will be impossible to do this on our own because those days when you need to be motivated, you can have that motivation by working with the other people. And we also don't see ourselves as these fantastic growers. We're just passionate about what we're doing and we can just learn learn about nature and really make a connection between human feeling and growing vegetables and plants and medicine because it's not just about it's not just about being horticulturist or agriculturist we're actually working on a whole bigger bigger scale where we connect with all those things and make it more of a holistic approach so that when it does feel a bit bad or someone is feeling a bit negative we know exactly the right method to at least help them along until they can feel better again. There's so many people that want to do something like this or want to be involved in growing food, want to have some part in, in where their food comes from but don't have access to land, maybe don't have the space to grow their own or and I think there's real potential in, in small scale farms, small community farms to offer that experience and offer a sense of community and offer a chance to do it all together because you know I started out doing this you know maybe I could, you know I was able to do it quicker I was able to do it with a bit more freedom because of that privilege of having a home place to come back to but but I couldn't have done it on my own, you know, I, I, I couldn't have done it at any stage on my own and, and it's particularly now, you know, it's such a, it's a thing that's, that's held by so many different people now and it feels like all those people have some ownership over it um, emotionally and, and in their own connection to this place, um, you know, and, and I remember the first time that I saw the garden full of people, you know, milling around the pathways and, and eating together and yeah, it brought a tear to my eye because it was really, that really was the, the vision really was to have something shared.